Welcome into the Casual Sports Show. It's Earl Burnett, a.k.a. Casual E, with my man, money-making Mitch, Mitchell Hughes, in the house. You're in the Casual House on a Wednesday hump day here in a nice hot day in the valley. And we're going to try to give y'all sports from our perspective, as we do all the time. If you want to follow this show, go ahead and follow us on our social media outlets, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and a YouTube channel. And hit us up on the website at www.casualsports.com. You can also follow, uh, uh, subscribe, I should say, there at the website as well, and download the apps. And you can also check us out all the articles that are all going up on the website as well. With that, you are in the casual house. What up, Mitch? What's going on, bro? Not much. Diamondbacks might be choking, but I got a microphone after <laughs> oh, I don't know how many months. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. Yeah, we got your audio coming in real nice, too. So that's good. That's cool. That's cool. So, yeah, Diamondbacks did do a choke job on us today, but I mean, we, we, I guess we got too happy. What Monty always say, happy on the farm. We got too happy on the farm. The Diamondbacks started doing too good. They started winning four in a row. We're trying to get that fifth in a row, get 10 over 500. It's like, okay, that's just too good to be true. And bam, they Diamondbacked on us. So it's all good. I mean, but actually, not the whole team. We got the bullpen Diamondbacked on us, right? Oh, yeah, this is a complete bullpen, which the Diamondbacks are known for two things. They finally beat one of them. They're known for choking in May. They're horrible <laughs> in May every single year, even the year they won the World Series. But this year, right. somehow they beat it. The other thing they're known for is having a horrible bullpen. They have not beaten that one yet. Um, mm. One of the crazy things is I was very disappointed in the Diamondbacks. I was right. really mad. I was like, why? Like, it was one of those where it's like, why do I keep watching this team? But, why? like, we didn't ex- <laughs> We didn't expect them to be eight games over 500, so why don't I give them a break? Like, they haven't been eight games over 500 since 2019. So I'm going to give them a break, benefit of the doubt a little bit. I think they win two out of three against Austin, and I think they're back. Right. All right. Well, it looks like they're doing good enough. I mean, they're hanging around with the Dodgers, like, closely. We're not talking about, you know, usually when they talk about hanging around with the Dodgers, it's five to ten games. They they up there like 1.5 on one and a half. So they hanging around. So I mean, we got to give them some kind of credit. But what are they? What can they do right now about that bullpen? Though right now, I mean, the trade deadline so far away. So what can they do? Who, how can they sh- shuffle things around to get a little bit a better uh, play out of the bullpen? The best thing I think they can do, and I know that they sent him down to the minor leagues to go and like, we love you. We think he can do better, which I think is also the right move. I'm just a patient human being. I think they should bring Jay Jamison back up. He was their best relief pitcher before he got sent to the minor leagues. Like, I think they should send him back up. I think he's ready. He's doing great. Um, But I don't have – I don't know why he's still there, personally. Mm. They have a plan for him. I got to trust the plan, despite me not wanting to trust the plan. I have to trust it. But I think that's what they can do right now. Another piece later is – their catcher right now is doing phenomenal. Moreno and Herrera, the bullpen. Okay. And I think eventually Carson Kelly gets traded for a bullpen player. Carson he Kelly? To, yeah, I think wow. Carson Kelly's going to end up going. Moreno's amazing. Herrera's no. doing good as a backup. I think it's what you got to do. Is that Carson Kelly getting traded because he's valuable or is it because he's just not doing good enough? Carson Kelly is currently injured, and Moreno oh, okay. is cheaper okay. than Carson Kelly. Okay, and he's doing just as good batting. 
he's slightly worse as a catcher than Kelly, like hmm. defensively, but he's a better batter. So if you're going to pay the dude less to be just as good as someone, why wouldn't you trade them to get an open player? I thought Kelly's a, Kelly's a, 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 that's, I mean, that's Diamondbacks for you. I mean, he was, he's been around for a minute at least. I love Carson Merrill, Kelly. Kelly the, are you thinking Merrill, the pitcher? Yeah. I'm talking about the catcher, Carson. <laughs> yeah, that's what I just said. Carson Kelly, you said Merrill. Are you talking oh, about okay. that? You get me all mixed up. Which one are you talking about now? <laughs> I'm talking about the catcher, not the pitcher. <laughs> yeah, you're talking about Carson Kelly, right? Okay, just making sure we're on yeah. the same page. Yeah. Then we on the same page. Okay. Yeah. All sure. week long, if y'all don't know, all, all week long, Mitch has been getting names mixed all up with what he's talking about. We're talking about these diamond backs. He got like three different Zacks. He even went back to Zach Cranky. <laughs> it's not my fault the diamond backs <laughs> got 80 different Zacks. Like, let's get new names over here. They're the Arizona okay. Zach, Zach and Backs. Um, yeah. Zach but and yes, I was right. <laughs> That's good. I like that. But yes, I. But yeah, I think Carson's gone by the by the trade deadline. I. Oh wow, man! Opinion. I like Carson Kelly, man. I, I covered him all last year, even though they was on a down slope. But he was he was always good and always doing his job. So, but yeah, that, I mean, you got to do what you got to do, especially when you got a value valuable piece that you can make something out of it. I mean, that's like all sports do the same thing. At some point, everybody becomes tradable, or or or, or you know where they can. Everybody has an expiring date, I should say, at some point. I didn't think Dalton Marshall was going to get traded last year, but he got traded, and yeah. they got they got um, Moreno out of it, who has been amazing, right. and they got Dominic Fletcher, I believe, off that trade. Both of them have been phenomenal, so yeah. it makes sense Marshall. that you go and push your luck and get another you know trade out of this. Yeah, Varsha was part of all that speed they gave up, right? Yeah, his issue was he was always going to be the same dude. In my opinion, he was always going to be a 230 average hitter. He was always going to be oh. an average catcher. Like, I think they traded him. Right now, he's a 210 hitter, and he's not performing well. So, I would say that they won the trade, finally. The Arizona Diamondbacks Ooh. finally won a trade. Congratulations. <laughs> well, I have, not, I have not heard any complaints all year long so far about Tory Lovello. Nobody's complaining. Nobody's coming up saying he should be out. Nobody. Give me, give me your thoughts of what Tory's doing and how he's doing up to this point and, 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 and going forward. Is, is he, is he pretty much in place for the future for this team? Oh, do you want my complaints now? I can go into, no. I'm oh, um, okay. I mean, man, man, you're so bad, you're <laughs> negative, do you? Negative. No, you got too I, much negativity, too many negative vibes going around so much, man. I so my only issue with Lovello is like this game. I wish he was a little bit more aggressive on the base running. I right. feel like and but the issue, and I see it from Lovello's point, is that he has a lot of young players. And you know, Corbin Carroll was injured at one point this year. You don't okay. want to injure your players this early in the year. So I understand right. I just wish that when the bases were loaded. I wish that may or no, not when the bases were low. Sorry, when they had a person on second, and third. I wish he wrapped a player around because if you wrap that player around, he would have won that game. But oh, you thought this players, morning's game? This, the- morning, this morning's game, he yeah. would have won. Wow. Okay. Yeah. But also at the same time, like you can't blame him for the bullpen sucking. You can't blame him. Correct. Like Correct. if the bullpen didn't Correct. suck, they wouldn't have been in that position in the first place. So Correct. I understand Correct. where he's coming from. I don't want my rookies injured right now when we're playing for the playoffs. So right. like, it's more like my opinion versus an expert's. Like, I'm just going to give it to him. I think Lovello, right. I, and you've known me this entire time. Like I sit with the same spot Ed sits at. I think Lovello should have had a long-term contract a long time ago. I think he's one of the few managers that right. actually matters in the, in baseball. Like it's just like NBA. I don't think coaches matter the most. There's a few that matter. Not all of them matter. And I think Lavelle is one of them. He understands the game. He understands people. That's the biggest right. part of baseball is I don't think managers understand people and right. when they're at their lows, when they're at their highs, while also managing statistics. I think he's one of the best. I think they need to lock him up, and I'm surprised they haven't already. Wow, that's that's good, man. That's that's 
First, another thing too, don't ever sell yourself short on being an expert at this stuff. All you got to do is your opinion is, you know, it's part of the whole deal. But at the same time, you just back it up with those facts. You just back it up with, it can go up against anybody's opinion out there. So don't sell yourself short, dude. You, you, you watching, you there, you watching every damn game, you there. So don't, don't sell yourself short. But yeah, that's a good report, man. I like that. I like that. Like I said, y'all know me. I'm, I'm, I'm doing all the football and basketball and WNBA basketball and you know everything else and Mitch has just got the focus on baseball which I am so happy that he does and uh yeah you 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 see some of that stuff that I probably would I wouldn't have caught like what you just said about what, how they could have won this morning I wouldn't have caught that I'd have been sitting there like okay we lost let's get out of here <laughs> I wouldn't be able to that catch none of that stuff. <laughs> that's what I want to chalk it up to is okay we lost I want to get out of there but like I was thinking about it as you asked that question I was like oh yeah they there was a point where they could have wrapped around third, but there was a misreading. They didn't do it. They never scored. Oh God, they could have won. Now I'm wow. now I'm disappointed. Now I'm really mad. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's crazy. All right. Well, there's the Diamondback report. We'll try to have that. We would try to. We will have that every show now because now it's all baseball. Now, I mean, the sun's been gone for a couple of weeks now. Uh, football's in in rookie camp right now, so we're not really paying that much attention to that right now. But we haven't had a we haven't had a Cardinal segment segment in a while. I was gonna try to get one of the Cardinal guys to come in here. We can talk Cardinals, but just off the top of your head, what's your thoughts about where the Cardinals stand right now with their draft they did, and uh, where you think they're going as far as Hopkins goes? Where 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 do you where's your feel on the Cardinals right now? My feel is the Cardinals don't have a feel. That is my feel. Um, I think we're I finally in the same boat. I think we're in the same boat on this I, one. Cause. I, I don't have like a really good answer because I'm very confused where it's like, we want to trade Hopkins. We don't want to trade Hopkins. We want to keep Kyler happy. We don't care about Kyler. We want to hire this coach. We want to hire this coach. And it's just like, I'm, you actually cover the Cardinals way more than I cover the Cardinals. I just see headlines mm-hmm. here and there. I'm just like, I mm-hmm. don't understand what you guys want out of life but i don't feel like you want to win by any means well we're, we're actually a little bit behind on cardinal stuff so far because we got so much going on like like i just finished sons and i'm jumping into dying into uh, mercury and and getting britney stuff covered when she's coming back i had all that going on so now i'm finally this week getting into diamondbacks and going to be jumping into the cardinal stuff and going down to the facility to get all checked you know you know get that all squared away and start trying to keep up with that now so uh it's a lot of work it's a lot of stuff going on but you know we you know this ain't a job we love doing this stuff but uh what i can gather up until this point is that they're 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 in no man's land right now you know just kind of they don't know who they are right now because of course they got so many new pieces going to be coming in with the draft they lost a lot of key pieces and they still have two major clogs that are hanging in the air right now with hopkins and Booter. so it's like what and for away three major clogs. Kyler's still being hurt, so we don't know when he's coming back. So it's like all those three things tells me this is going to be a really long, grueling season, bro. I mean, it's going to be one of those ones you're going to be like, do we really have to cover this? It's going to get bad. Yeah, this is one of those seasons and one of those sports where I'm like, whew, I'm kind of glad I don't have to cover them. Like, football <laughs> season, once October hits, is kind of my vacation, like, I might go to the Tennessee Titans and go watch them play a game. I might go watch the Cardinals face the Bengals. Like, this is my vacation when I can do right. whatever I want and enjoy my life because I just covered 162 games. I'm so <laughs> glad that this is my vacation time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. You got some vacation time in there at some point for sure. Or you burn out. But, but uh, yeah, um, it's going to be a long season for these guys. But, I mean, you got to, like, you got to give them – a pretty darn good grade on what they've done with the draft this year because that draft to me looked like identical to a New England picture draft. I mean, it was Bill Belichick. Uh, I mean, it looked just like it. The way they did the jumping down and jumping back up and jumping over here and grabbing more assets. And they, they did a damn good job. Monty Austin Ford did a pretty good job in his first Cardinal draft. And uh, now, of course, those draft picks are all still dice rolls. You know, you don't know if they're going to come through or not. But how he got it, the strategy he did to do it was pretty damn good. So hopefully that's a new change for the Cardinals because they they don't do things like that. They never have. So I like what they did with the draft and the draft picks. 
especially starting with the offensive line. That's where they always need to, but they always get enticed with something else and they go with something else and try to take a lesser on the offensive line. But now they've paid attention to what Kyler is probably going to need is, is a better offensive line because he can't be running around like that unnecessarily where he goes out and tweaks his dang knee and he's done. I can understand him running when it's necessary, but when the offensive line is just so bad and he's running for his life, you got to start thinking when we got to go ahead and start shoring up this offensive line. I think that's what they did. Um, that's That was the safest pick, of course, to go on offensive line, but it was also the right pick. So that's a start, and uh, I think that's a good start with them. And if they can get that offensive line shored up to give Kyler the confidence to come back from an injury and get more confident in his knee and stuff, that would be only could only help them in the future. So I like what they did to draft, but it's going to be a long season, bro. It's going to be one of those – I mean, the start of the damn season from the schedule, the first nine games could be losses. Oh, and nine. If you look at their schedule, it's brutal, man. I'm like, man. I thought the I thought the teams that were mediocre were supposed to get an easier schedule than the next year. We got the tough one of the toughest schedules. I'm like, my goodness. Yeah, I I haven't really dove into the Arizona or sorry Arizona Cardinals uh, schedule yet. My original like way too early to predict. I know we'll predict later. My way too early is probably seven and ten this year. Oh, yeah. But even with and that's. That was if Car- if Kyler played. So yeah. like I'm at like I'm at like five and twelve right now. Yeah, you was you way too generous at seven. I uh, man, all right. I was in. The- <laughs> uh, I know that was if Bird- Kyler played. Right, right. I know the bird gang gonna probably come down on me on this one, but I I, I was in the day media room with Dwayne Rankin the other before, when the Suns ended, and we were all just kind of just sitting there talking. He's like, "What do what y'all think the Cardinals gonna do this year?" I said, "I." They're going to be 2 and 15. He was like, 2 and 15. <laughs> I that thought, was a little harsh. That, yeah, it was. But but you, I, look at that <laughs> schedule. You're like, man, they could start 0 and 9. And then after the 0 and 9 start, Kyler would be just getting back in the swing of things. In my head, coming back from an ACL injury does not just happen that same year. It takes a whole season for you to get back to yourself and that confident. So he's going to struggle. And I'm going, man, I don't see anything. Other than losses, so they could probably just barely get two wins in this thing, maybe three tops. That's where okay, I'm at. I have, them, I have them beating the commanders. I don't. I think the commanders are at least a better structured team, know where they're going. They got a direction right now. I don't think the Cardinals have any direction right now. But but, but they anything have can happen. Suns turmoil. They have that Suns turmoil that they dealt with at the beginning of the season. Of who's the owner? That, oh well, yeah, that that yeah, okay. Well, how how's that affect you on the field? I'll never know. Well, how should that affect them on the field? But I mean, I think they still got a quarterback issue too, right? Who did they pick up quarterback yeah. wise? Um, but I think they're good enough what they do to put a good game against the Cardinals, especially at home. So I mean, I don't know. They could win that game. That could be the one the one that's tossed up in the beginning, but it could be a loss just as well. But um, we're not gonna... three quarterbacks who I don't know who's starting is Sam Howell, Jake Fromm, and Jacoby Brissett. They're winning that game. I don't put that on me. Okay, let's then shift that back over to the Cardinals. Who are the Cardinals starting? McCoy? I would rather have McCoy than Sam Howell. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Hey, man, I... <laughs> I was looking at some tape on Clayton Toon. The, the the six round pick we got quarterback I believe the Cardinals picked up. Yeah. Oh yeah. man, this kid. I think he was there in late fifth. He's yeah late fifth. Yeah, that man, that kid can look like he got something, bro. I mean, he got something. I, I looked at. I, I was not only looking at the positive though. I looked at full game where I could see his negative stuff too. But as a whole, he looks like an NFL quarterback to me. He looks like he can be a serviceable NFL. I'm not going to say superstar, nothing like that. I'm not going to jump that crazy. But it looks like he, once he gets over that rookie wall and gets all the information that he has and, you know, and get and the game slows down a little bit, I think he can be a very good serviceable quarterback. Now that um, could be an issue. That. <laughs> that could be an issue later do you, down the line. Do you have him being like um, 
a Colt McCoy, or do you have him being like uh, the Houston Texans QB over the last couple of years? Um, but then, what's Tech. Davis Mills? Sorry. Uh, Davis, yeah, I would say about a, in that category of a Davis Mills or somebody of that kind of like borderline, you know, I don't want to put him in a Trubisky because I don't, I don't, I don't see him being, I haven't seen him perform on his, on the field in the NFL game yet. So, but if I had to use somebody, that's a good, that's a good, uh, a good, uh, analogy with Davis Mills. I think that's good. But remember, it's really funny is Mills is, plays for he, the Texans and he's a rookie, the he's a rookie. quarterback. Yeah, the rookie quarterback played for Houston College. Correct. So they Correct. both played for Houston. That's hilarious. I think I think and there's a lot there's a lot of people thinking that this kid might even be the starter in game one. Now, he's gotta be doing something good if they can think that he's gonna be the starter over Colton McCoy while Kyler's out. So I don't know. We'll see. But I, I'm I'm dying to see training camp. But this this rookie thing I'm not worried about. And I'm not looking at that as far as my tape, but I'm looking at him in game tape. I watched the game that he was playing against. I believe it was Memphis or something. They were down like three touchdowns. This kid brought him back and won the game. I'm like, man, I mean, he's a he's a pretty big kid. He got a good strong arm, and his his deep ball is a little suspect a little bit, but that could be worked on. But his his ball placement as far as the route tree running, oh man, he, this dude is right on point. And I, the main thing I saw on tape that gave me a little bit positive uh, spin on this kid was when he dropped back to pass, his head went from right to left. It was going through progression. It wasn't just staring down one side of a field. That was what I was looking at. And I, I saw it. I'm like, wow, this kid might got so He might have something. He might have something. This is one of those dudes that might just shock you in the training camp and come up and go, hey, wait a minute. This dude might be the one that's going to start. So and we'll for, be. for listeners that aren't crazy like you that don't watch Houston games way after Houston <laughs> Target played them, um, he is six foot three, two hundred twenty pounds. So Ooh. what you want in a quarterback? He was man. around five, one thirty nine pick. Oh, uh, he man. was he, born in Plano, Texas. He played for Houston College. He was. Yeah, he, he looks he ideal. He, he looks like an ideal replica, or not replica, but an ideal. Uh, package of what a quarterback should look like i mean he looks like a character playing a quarterback from texas in a movie <laughs> like he looks like the actor of a texas quarterback like straight, yeah. please look up this guy if you're listening to us right now look he, him up and tell me I'm he, wrong. <laughs> look him up look him up and also go to some some of the tape on youtube they got him breaking down on stuff good and bad I mean, but he, he's man, the kid, the kid looks good to me, but we'll see how that goes for the Cardinals. But like I said earlier, it looks like they're going to have a pretty, pretty long season, bro, to me. I mean, and and, and rightfully so, because you, you, you're, you're basically a rebuilding. I thought they were in a retool, but no, it's pretty much a rebuild almost. We got all of our Arizona teams doing rebuilds right now, not all of them, but the two major ones. But anyway. You're listening to the Casual Sports Show right here on KSRN, the hottest internet radio station on the web, Casual Sports Radio Network. We're going to come right back and we're going to get back into the NBA because that is what's dominating the sports line, the sports talk, sports betting, you name it. It's dominating everything right now because it's still the playoffs are going on and some things are going down we got to talk about. So you stick around in the Casual House. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Ed Smith, host 
to the Easy Sports Talk Show. In addition to hosting the show every Saturday, did you know I'm also an inspirational, motivational speaker? Utilizing life experience in my 15-year professional sports career, I offer programs to a wide variety of audiences, tips from the locker room to the boardroom and beyond. Whether you're a corporate executive, sports organization, or faith-based organization, Ed Smith Speeds can customize a team-building, motivational, and inspirational program to fill your needs. I love to come inspire and motivate your group to create lifelong shining moments. To learn more about booking you for your event, visit edsmithspeaks.com or contact me directly at info at edsmithspeaks.com. When was last time you had your awnings cleaned? What about the oil stains on your driveway? Majestic Services has you covered. They're your pressure washing and window cleaning experts. With over 11 years of experience, they'll provide you with a free, no obligation Quote, for your awnings, driveways, stucco, concrete, asphalt, pool deck, stone, and more. Give Matt a call at 602-881-8228. Commercial or residential, let Majestic Services do your dirty work. 602-881-8228. You are listening to the best internet radio station on web. KSI in Arizona. Welcome back into Casual House, the casual sports show right here on KSRN. Earl Burnett, a.k.a. Casual E with money making Mitch, Mitchell Hughes in the house. And we're going to get down and talk a little bit about what's going on in the NBA right now. And the first couple of rounds, bro, was like. A lot of surprises, of course, when Milwaukee went down and teams you thought were going to be there, the Suns you thought were going to be in there a little longer and teams are going down. But at the end, you would think when you get to those conference finals, it is so competitive that it would be, you know, good basketball to watch. It hasn't been that in these days of Western and Eastern Conference finals. It's been, I mean, it's been good basketball at times. You can see the two teams, but it's like, where is the competition? Where is that battle to the end of scraping to go after that that ring? You know what I'm saying? I know the Lakers gave it, gave it everything they had because they just were not a better team than Denver, but you thought you would think they'd get at least one game out of it, right? Okay, if I learn how to unmute my microphone, that nah. would be every <laughs> once in a while. But, <laughs> That's live um, radio for you. I thought they'd win one for sure, but they had some really close ones where if it's like just if the ball bounced a different way, just one time in a right. game in a game, they could they could have won two. I mean, with a couple different bounces, like sometimes the ball just kind of hates you. Like no. it just doesn't want to. And when Denver was on fire, the ball went their way, and then when the Lakers were down by two, the ball went their way, and they just couldn't capitalize on it. Yeah, sometimes the refs hate you, and sometimes the <laughs> right. it's you know, just part of the deal. Right? Yeah, no, that's just part of the deal. But uh, let's talk about that Celtics and Heats and Heat. I should say Heats, Celtic and Heat uh, uh, game four, where we thought that the. I mean, when it started, I'm watching it in the first half. Even though it was close, still, I still thought the Heat was, was were going to win that game. And then the third quarter, the Celtics woke up and finally looked like the Celtics. I mean, it's hard for me to put, you know, into my thought process of a team that good and don't show up when they're supposed to show up. It's kind of tough. It's kind of like, how do you not come and play the first three games and the first two are in your building? How do you not? How do you not look like you look in game four in the first two games? And it's like. It all comes down to those two superstars. Sometimes they take, I can't say they take days off, but it, that's what it feels like, right? It seems like they take days off almost. I think this is, like, I think the Boston Celtics system is very, uh, I don't know, simple, I guess, where I think Jalen Brown is hurt. And 
Oh, fragile. That's what I'm thinking of. I think Jalen Brown is hurt, and I think that puts too much pressure on Jason Tatum because now he's the only scorer. But we saw him score 51 points, was it, in a game seven? So we can't right. say that he's not up for the pressure. And then it's an elimination game. He scores 33 points, 11 rebounds. The third quarter is what we expected from Boston, like the entire series where they outscored the Heat 38 to 23. They're in control of everything at that point. I think it's just maybe the Boston Celtics are in too fragile of a system right now, where it's just like Brown's hand is destroyed. Like there's something wrong with his hand, I believe, fully. So once you take out Brown or once you take out Tatum, this series is over at the end of the day. And maybe it's just as simple as that. Maybe we just overlooked it. That's a pretty good observation because I haven't really paid attention to that. I, I do know that everybody's at this point in the season is kind of dealing with something. But you might be right because he is missing a lot of shots that he normally makes in, you know, in key key points of a game. And you can see he's trying to do what he do, what he normally does, but it's just with the, sometimes the ball just will not fall. And, and it's, it, it, I think you could be right. He could be dealing with an injury that's nagging him right now. It does kind of feel that way a little bit. But you never want to make excuses. Team Guys like that and teams like that don't make excuses. They just know that everybody's looking to them to be the guy, to be the guy they're supposed to be to, to bring them through. And when we get Tatum, Tatum comes into a game and kind of just coast, and then all of a sudden blows up and starts shooting there and making everything. It's like... If he comes to a game that's locked in from start to finish, I mean, who beat that? Who, who's going to beat that team? I don't like, and that was our whole thing with Boston winning is that they play like this, they're going to win. I will say right. one of the big differences this time is the Celtics made 40% of their threes. They made 18 threes, where oh, yeah, made eight that of was 32. Different. Like, yeah, that was it's always the three pointer is the difference. And if Brown's hand is going to hurt at the end of the day, and he can't make those threes, that's going to hurt the Celtics over and over again. I always say it, and it's an old cliche. You live by the three, you're going to die by it. And that team shoots way too many, too, just like Golden State did. Uh, but, yeah, um, I thought the Heat kind of let up off the gas, and the, the moment got too big for them that, oh, that, 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 that hard trying to close a team out the first time got to them. And that's usually how it happens. You get one opp- you get opportunity to close them out the first time, you kind of – the moment gets too big and you choke it away and then come back to the next where you're even more focused. And you kind of – I think that's what's going to end up happening. I think they can still win in Boston. They didn't already won twice oh. up there already. So, I mean, I think they can go in there and win in Boston, but I think they'll be a more focused Miami Heat because when you play at home, especially in a – closeout game it's hard already but when you're at home you make the pressure even more on yourself because if you look at that game when you're at home you're trying to it it feels like the team's going for the knockout punch you know early in one shot you know they want to make the crowd get high because it's their home and they do too much and they try to do too much and and that's how they got all those turnovers they were trying to do back behind the back passes and trying to look too dang fancy trying to blow them out trying to make the crowd get hype and and they overdid it and it just it kind of got to them their own crowd is their own pressure they got that got to them so i mean that happens in a closeout game and it can also happen when you're at home you get comfortable you want your crowd to be into it so you want to do everything to do all cool for them and then you sometimes just overdo it and, and try to do things that are uncharacteristic of, of certain guys trying to do certain things and that's what i saw in that heat game that they were doing things that out of character you know what i'm saying yeah, and we talked about it previously where I had the Lakers being – I had the Lakers winning one and the Boston Celtics being swept, but sweeping in general is hard. Like, there's a reason why it doesn't happen a whole lot. Right. Well, the Celtics, the last two years in the playoffs, their home record is 10-11. and 11. They're under 500. So, going into right. tomorrow – I lost you there, are you you lost me? I can't hear you. Oh no, not now. That's not a good time to do that right now. I think it's your camera. Your camera changed and somehow like it just changed? Like it got really fuzzy and light compared to how it is right now, and then somehow I can hear you after that. <laughs> That's crazy.
Testing. I can't hear you.
I can hear you now. Yeah, I know, but I, my, my camera looks weird. It's, the thing don't have you in the box. <laughs> what the hell's going on with this thing? Am I still kind of in the background? Huh? Oh, never mind. Still, there you go. I got, you, I got you. I got you. I got like different boxes all set all up. It's crazy. I, whatever it is, it's my computer. When it's doing that, it's not some equipment, it's the computer. Hmm. That's weird. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I got I might need a new computer or something, because this one's starting to act really weird, man. Well, after we were talking about how hard it is to sweep teams, um, the Florida yeah. Panthers sweep their teams. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I'm just going to hit record. We're going to just pick up where we left up. Five, four, three, two. So you said it's really hard to sweep somebody. Or what happened? Right as I say I sweep someone, I get an ESPN alert saying that the Florida Panthers have officially sweeped their <laughs> opponent. But in all fairness, it took the first game – four overtimes it took the next one one overtime the next one after that one overtime and then it took the next one after that a four three victory where kachuk made one of the most incredible goals ever with 4.3 seconds left in regulation that wow. is what it takes to sweep some people sometimes yeah. it takes like 18 overtimes and an incredible shot exactly exactly man so so now you look at where they are right now can the Celtics actually pull off the unthinkable and actually get enough momentum to pull it off pull off the first time coming back from 03? They have the talent to do it. Will they do it? I don't think so. Yeah, they got enough talent for sure, but that pressure of that pressure of doing that's gonna get great. And if they can find a way to shift that pressure to Miami, that makes it even more possible right i mean because think about it you get the win everybody's expecting them to win you know the next game and get to the two three to two but when you get to that game six and you somehow pull it off you gotta think that the pressure's on miami and they're gonna choke this thing away well and one of the big things that we have to think about is boston has game seven they have the home field they have home field for five and they have it for seven the issue with Boston having home field is they're not a good home field team. They have been awful in the last few years at home field. So I'm not too worried about it. Even if it went to game seven, I still think Miami would somehow pull it off. But this is a very hot and cold team. And I think they'll get cold before four games in a row. That's a good point. There's, there's also a saying, too, that um, yeah, I'm a lot of my train of thought what I was going to say about that. But uh, <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, the, the, the saying is the, the the cliche saying is that the better team always wins, right? Can you really say that the Boston Celtics are a lesser team than the Miami Heat? I mean, coming in, we thought for sure the Boston Celtics were gonna be the one gonna you know take this thing with no problem. But it looks like the better team, team with all the pieces doing what the pieces are supposed to do, etc., are the Heat, right? I think NBA is probably the least random sport, but there's still randomness to it. Like, if you really want to talk about it, like, obviously the 04 Pistons, were they better than Kobe and Shaq? No. But did right. they have a meltdown that went and made them better? Yes. <laughs> um, right, right. Uh, they had some injuries, injuries in that one, too. So, yeah, injuries played a part in that, too. And um, the was it 2011 Dallas Mavericks with Nowitzki beating Dwayne Wade and LeBron James? 
Was yes. Nowitzki better than both of them? No. No. But did they pull it off? Yes. So like this it may was be the least moment. random yeah. sport. Mm-hmm. But things happen at the same time. Yeah. And like I'm not gonna sit here and say, you know, that Boston Celtics are a worse team than Miami. Miami just pulled it together better. Hey, I mean, you look at game one, Miami took over. Boston wasn't playing like Boston. Game two, Boston kind of sat around and Tatum and them didn't find any way. Game three, he shocked them. They came in there and won enough, I mean, and just blew them out pretty much. And then game four, we saw the Celtics say, let's play Celtic basketball. So you put those two teams together, then Miami falls off. Where are we going to get when both teams are at their full strength, going straight out, all out for 48 minutes? Who's the better team when, when that happens? I think Boston's the better team. If they were 100% healthy, if they both went full out, if they were able to pull all this off, Boston is the better team. Could Miami still win that game if they both went all out? Yeah, Miami could still win that game. I don't know how it's possible, but they could. Right, right. Yeah, I think you're right. I think full head-to-head, full strength, you know, playing at the top of their game, both teams – the Celtics are the better team in my that's just how it looks like on brand with the stars they have on that team. So can they get the next three games to to fall in line like that and they playing their best basketball? Because they've been up and down these playoffs a lot. You don't have any more room for 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 going up and down. You can't go back down. You gotta stay up. The the thing that would irritate me more than anything, and I know I said it would make me happy. If Boston won, because I'm going to clip everything that you said about how Boston can't come yeah, after this. I'm going to make fun of you. It would you irritate me that. so much because the last 4 0 team, to, or sorry, the last 3 0 deficit was the Boston Red Sox. I do not need Boston bragging more in my life. I do not wait, need Boston. Wait, 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 wait. Are you kidding me? The last 3 0 deficit it was the was a Boston team? I believe it was though for Boston Red Sox. There might have been hockey, oh. but. I think 04 Boston Red Sox was the last 3 0 team to come back. Wow. Yeah, it was Boston, Boston having two of these. I do not oh, need Boston was... doing this. So I need Boston to lose right now in Boston, Listen. Miami, move forward and move on with my life. Just, just as you said that, in my head, is everything works good for Boston. Everything does. And yet. And yet, when they go on radio, oh, the demons are haunting us. The demons yeah. are haunting us. We're not going to. You have 562 you. championships a year. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> they get everything to go their damn way somehow to win Super Bowls and World Series and you name they have, it. They have the 3 0 comeback to win the World Series. They have the greatest Super Bowl comeback of all time with Tom Brady. Just the next thing we needed, the 3 0 Boston Celtics right, man, comeback. I got where a they feeling. somehow win it. Mitch, I think you just you just said how it's gonna go, dude. With that, I think you just did it, dude. It's gotta that's gotta be what's gonna happen, right? If it this just happens, happens, I'm taking a week off. I, I'm, I'm telling <laughs> you right now, <laughs> and I'm definitely gonna play this one back if that takes place. Because man, you just you just hit it right on the damn. That happens in Boston all the damn time. So why not have that? They're gonna be the first team to actually finally do it. It could happen. I don't- I don't like this conversation. Can we go? I don't need to talk. I don't. I, I want to move. <laughs> so bad. I don't either. I don't either. I got a sneak. I got the, I got this. I got this feeling in the back of my mind. Oh, that's gonna be the talk. That's gonna be the talk, bro. I'm gonna say, Mitch said it. He said it. <laughs> uh, that would actually be, be cool, clipping. though. But. I'm going to be clipping clips of you and clips of me, and it's just going to be the worst moments of casual sports show history. Just oh uh, right. yeah, we got we got commercials for skits, commercial skits. Yeah, but uh, let's let's shift gears and talk about the coaching thing that's going on with the Suns right now. Uh, I mean, but first, props to the Denver Nuggets for for holding on to the number one spot all year long. And coming into these playoffs and proving that they were the number one team in the West and probably going to be proving that they're the best team in the NBA. Props to Michael Malone and how he's got that team playing and focused to a point where, I mean, they look unbeatable to me. But um, did you see the damn shot that Joker did in that Laker game on that three-pointer on one foot? I did. My goodness. 
It's like, come on, that's just wrong. That's just that's just cheating right there. This dude could do just about everything on the court. And he looked like he should be on a couch somewhere eating some dang on popcorn and some ho-hos or whatever. But I texted my dad because he made like that shot over AD in game one when everything was going down. And I texted my dad. I was like, is anyone better at the oblique shot than you? Right. Like no one in the history of NBA has been like, I have 0.2 seconds. Let me throw it against the roof and then let it go into a hoop better than that, dude. I, 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 I was going to get the clip that when LeBron's press conference, when he said that exact same thing, he's like, hey, when a guy's there and you got a contest shot on him and he lets it go off one foot off the three-point line, 50 feet up in the air and it goes in, you just got to tip your cap to that dude. It was There's funny. Nothing do. There's nothing you can do, man. It was like, if he going to make that, give him the damn trophy and walk out the building. Exactly. <laughs> He's going to be making that. But uh, props to Denver Nuggets, though. And, uh, and shame, shame, freaking shame on all media outlets out there. They woke up the next freaking morning talking nothing about the Lake, only the Lakers and LeBron James, nothing about the Nuggets doing what they did. It's like, come on. It was like an afterthought. The Nuggets did what they did. Then let's talk about LeBron and the Lakers. Like, man, get them dudes. They props, man. Get off the dang network. Nobody want to talk about no dang Lakers. At least I do. Uh, there's a TikTok video. I don't know who did it, but I don't think I laughed so hard in my life. Where it's the day after Lakers lose to Denver and it's like ESPN. And he's like, we're going to see if this is the first time the Lakers come back from a 4 row deficit and like, yeah yeah it was obviously fake but it cracked me up because I yeah. pretty much covered LeBron yeah it's, 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 it, I mean it is what it is I mean the smaller markets don't get the credit they're supposed to get I think it's going to be that exact same way if Phoenix ever wins one or gets to that point they're going to be like okay yeah yeah whoever the team they beat was the team they want to talk about <laughs> but anyway But let's talk about the Suns right now. I mean, where they are right now. Basketball doesn't give you enough time to sit back and wait. You know, if you don't have a coach, you better hurry up and get a damn coach because that coach got to get to work. And right now, we're sitting on five or six, five teams that are out there ain't even touched coaching, hiring coach. And we talked about this last time that there's got to be a domino somewhere that everybody's waiting on because not one team has even brought in an interview yet. Uh, reports are out there that the Suns are going to be bringing in interviews this week, tomorrow, starting tomorrow. But, I mean, my, my goodness, it's like you don't have a lot of time, so what are we waiting on? I mean, I know you do your due diligence and you go out to get all all the candidates you can get and then you talk to everybody and then, boom, make a freaking hire and let's go on because that guy's got to get in and get to work. Is there an unwritten rule that maybe I've never noticed before and I'm just not thinking about it? Is there an unwritten rule that says, like, we can't hire a coach before, you know, like, the championship happens? Like, for some reason, it's just rude or something. Because every sport has unwritten rules that are stupid as heck. Could, is this a rule that I just don't know about? You might have something there. I think they probably can't do anything to the league year. You're probably right. You're probably right. You're probably right, man. But I mean, they can, they can, they can talk to them. Well, why are they going after bringing interviews in? They, uh, they, no, I don't know. That's a good question. That's a good question. Because why are they interviewing right now? They shouldn't be able to interview if that's the case, right? Well, you have the legal tampering period in NFL where everybody knows you're full of it and you're hiring people, but like you can't announce it till later. So there might be, like, there might be there a might deadline be somewhere in yeah. this process. It's probably you, you. You're probably right on point with that. It's got to be a deadline day somewhere in there. But um, if they're interviewing, if they want to hire somebody right now, they could do it. So I don't think I don't think there's anything stopping anything right now. I'm gonna check that. I want to check that because that's that's a good that's a good question. But I don't think there's nothing restricting them because right now they wouldn't even be interviewing if there was a restricted date. Sometime I know you can't talk to free agents and those type of things. So that Ty Lue thing is probably held up because of that because you can't tamper with that. So you can't call his agent and be like, we want to talk to Ty Lue and see what he's doing. No, you can't do that. So, yeah, you could be right. I got to check that. I got to check that. But um, but the Suns have some candidates that are coming in for interviews uh, starting tomorrow. Uh, the assistant coach for the Sacramento Kings. Uh, what's his name? Fernandez, I believe his last name is. I actually didn't hear that report. Um, I'll look it up right now. 
Yeah, he's coming in tomorrow for an interview. And then Friday, Frank Vogel is coming in for an interview. And sometime the week following after, after that, they'll get Doc trickle in and the rest of those guys trickle in. But here's the thing that, I, that, I, that, that doesn't make sense to me, Mitch. And you tell me what you think about this. Um, there was a, a, a show out there that had Bill Simmons on. And Bill Simmons said, you want me to tell you who the next coach is for the Phoenix Suns? He said, who is it going to be? It's going to be Kevin Young. It's going to be Kevin Young. Okay, if he already knows that and he's got an inside track and knowing that's going to happen, why are the Suns going through the motions with all these guys and wasting everybody's time, dudes flying in and all this stuff to do interviews if they already know Kevin Young's going to get the job? Um, I'm going to go and answer that with two parts. Assuming that Bill Simmons is right, which I don't believe he is, um, why does the NFL go and keep flying people out for all of that when they know who exactly who they're going to hire? They prove that every single time. Like, they're like, oh, we'll hire this, or we'll interview eight people, but really, we're going to hire this guy. Shh, it's okay. <laughs> like, we got to make it look like that? we're doing our due diligence. We got to make it look right. like we're doing what we're supposed to do so we don't want to look stupid just hiring the first guy that's on the board. But yeah, but still, then if that's the case, don't leak out who you hire into somebody. I'm also going to say that it was probably on the Bill Simmons podcast and Bill Simmons was probably just taking a shot in the dark to go and make news so that people like us talk about it. And like we are doing hope right now. Crazy, and I don't think he actually has information like – Bill Simmons is a good reporter at certain things. I'm not going. Mm-hmm. I'm not discrediting him by any means. I'm trying not to, at least. Um, I'm not a huge fan of him, but like at the same time, he knows what he's talking about, and right. I don't think he's really big in the Phoenix market. Honestly, like he's more worried about the bigger market. So I'm not going to trust him on this one. That's a good point. That's a good point. I mean. I'm not trying to say I want somebody to be wrong, but I do want somebody to have to suffer a consequence for just trying to be the man to say something and just be the one that puts something out there for everybody to go fishing at. I mean, you, know, I mean, you don't have to, you don't have to say that, man. Just say I think this is what's going to happen, or this is my opinion. But he just straight out literally said, "I the, the coach is going to be." He like he knew some inside information that nobody else knew, but um. I mean, I got inside of my Bill man. Simmons Flex, so Flex, Flex, is already, Flex is already looking at it like he don't know what he's talking about. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that he doesn't know what he's talking about because he can have his own opinion, which is fine. Leave it at that. Make it your opinion and just call it that. But don't say you know for sure who the coach is because you got some inside track that nobody else has. And and you made a good point. He ain't even in the Phoenix market trying to – I mean, how would he know? So – I mean, but yeah, I mean, I got guys that are telling me, you know, you know, they got all those candidates are coming in for a reason. I mean, they're going to make a guy make the decision on on the, on the candidates, candidates go through their interviews because this you got to be interviewing these guys. so You can find out certain things that are on these guys mind that might click to what's in your head and you hire the right guy. But I don't think, in my opinion, I don't think Kevin Young should be the, the candidate for the team. If you ask me, everybody's saying, yeah, it's a good fit and. Because Booker loves them and they know it. But I think that's pretty much like, then why'd you fire Monty if you're going to go with the same voice and the same style and the same philosophy and the same everything? Why did you fire Monty to start with? That don't make any sense if you're going to bring him in as the head coach. Yeah, I'm big on like promoting from within. But like when I run my own business and when I do, when I've done my own things like that. But when it comes to sports and other businesses like the one I'm currently in, that it, I'm trying not to say so I don't get in trouble. Um, <laughs> like, you have to move around a lot to, like, move up because there's a lot more competition. There's a lot better people. Like, when I work food, of course mm-hmm. I'm going to promote from within. I train them my way. I train them to do it this way. They're going right. to move up because they know my system. Well, right. if a system doesn't work, they're going to fire me, and they're not going to promote the person who knows my system. Like, Correct. That's how sports is. Like, right. at the end of the day, you're not going to promote the guy who runs the same system because why would you? It didn't work the first time. You have to move around and gain other people's trust. I, that's what I'm saying, man. I mean, everybody's talking about the voice has changed, but it's the same voice. If it was Monty's voice and he was just following when Monty's philosophy, I know he can have his own philosophy and change things, but still that same voice is in the room. That same voice is in the organization. That same voice everybody's comfortable with is still there. 
And can that same voice get up all of a sudden and be a authoritative voice to some team that needs an authoritative voice? I don't I, I, I mean, I, I can't say no, that can happen, but I, I wouldn't take a chance on that when you're talking about this team trying to get to the next level and win now. A first-time head coach is not going to be the answer because Devin Booker and and K- KD, which is his, here's the example right here. Booker is endorsing. Why is Booker endorsing? Because Booker's comfortable with them. So, I mean, so that that to me, that's a red flag. Don't 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 just do that just because Booker wants him. Man, I think Nick Nurse is the perfect fit for this team because he's a guy that's not going to back down to no player, and he's going to make that player do his philosophy, what he wants to be done. Period. So, I I don't like the Kevin Young hire, but if, he, if they hire him, okay, yeah, that's cool. But it, it was it would not make sense to me to fire Monty with the same philosophy, the same everything, and go to the guy behind him. Everybody on that staff is running Monty's system. So, I don't know. You know I'm a big Nick Nurse guy, so I'm not going to argue with that logic at all. <laughs> all right. So, okay, out of all the other candidates that are out there, all these guys are going to get these interviews. Who is your – I mean, you said Nick Nurse is your your feel, but who do you think from a – because I had a tweet go out. And somebody said uh, said something about they thought it was going to be uh, Kevin Young and boom, boom, boom. And I said to my and I and I wrote back on the tweet. I said this. I said, I said I got to disagree with that because that Kevin Young looked like a James Jones move to me. But what is going to be the Matt Ishbia move? Is Matt Ishbia staying with the Monty philosophy? Why did he fire Monty? So I'm going. I don't think that's the case. I don't think that's the kind of, if it's going to be a Matt Ishby, it's going to be something splashy, something something he's going all out, something he thinks his team needs. So who do you I think that to. is? From a, from a James yeah. Jones standpoint, that's definitely going to be Kevin Young, but from a Ishby standpoint, who is that candidate in your head or in your thought, or being, I mean, in your mind, when you think Matt Ishby going after Kevin Durant, who are you going to bring in to come? I mean, who do you think he would go after? God, I'm trying to think of connections to connections to connections like we right. talked about with right. Isaiah Thomas. And without going crazy on it, I sat, you know, my feelings on this. I don't want to get into this argument. I think Doc Rivers might end up being the coach. Ooh. He wants the splashy move. That that's that would sound like what he's doing. I'm, as much as nobody would like that move, and hear and hear hear me out. I am not an endorser of Doc Rivers. I'm just saying we got to put a little bit of respect on Doc Rivers' name. That's all I've been saying from day one. I'm not saying I want him to be here to be the coach. I just say we got to put a little respect on him. He did complete the task of being an NBA uh, championship championship coach. So that just might be something that could fit with this unit of players. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to say will or will not because nobody knows for sure, but that would be a Matt Ishbia move to me. I guarantee you that. So, so I'm glad you brought that up because I I made this game while we were setting up the Uh-oh. show. I know you. Okay. it's time to break it out. So All right. there's a little bit of a common theme here, a little bit of a twist, but a common theme. And I want to know who you want more or who you want. Okay. And you kind of ruined it with Nick Nurse first. So we'll start with Nick Nurse. Do you want Nick Nurse? Uh, yes. Would you like Frank Vogel? No. All right. How about Rick Carlisle, current coach of the Pacers? Current coach? Rick current Carlisle. coach of the Pacers. No. All right. So would you like Larry Brown, who is currently the Memphis advisor? You talking about Larry on the coach from Philly? On the Sixers back in the day, that Larry Brown? He might have been on the Sixers. That's not who I know him yeah. as, but he might have been that uh, Larry Brown. You talking about the Larry Brown that that, that coach Allen Allen Iverson back in the day? God, he might have been. Or are you talking about the Brown that's in Sacramento right now and is balling it out right now? No, not the one that's balling out right now. Okay, he's okay. currently an advisor, so he's older. Much older. Yeah, that's Larry Brown, and that's Larry Brown. I don't know, and I wouldn't want Larry Brown to come back and coach, no. Okay. 
So what about Bob Brindley? Who? Bob Brindley. No. <laughs> All right, and George Seifer. Oh, George Seifer. Damn, George Seifert. That's a dang old football coach. What the hell would he be doing? Hey, in basketball? All right, you caught me on that lie. I was trying to mess you. Uh, all right. <laughs> so, so Nick Nurse, Frank Vogel, you said your answer. Just so you know, Bob Renly was the World Series coach also for uh, the Diamondbacks. <laughs> I really want to mess with you on that. One. Who? Bob who? <laughs> <laughs> so. I wanted so just so you know, Larry Brown, Frank Vogel, Nick Nurse, and Rick Carlisle all won a championship. Rick Carlisle, who's currently the Pacers coach, actually won it with the Dallas Mavericks with Newitz. Mm. Right, that's Nick right. Nurse, obviously, Toronto, Frank Vogel, Lakers, and Larry Brown right. won it with the 04 Detroit pa- or Pistons. But you said he was old, so I'll give you that one. That's correct. Um, I forgot he was the coach when they won that championship. So I just wanted to let you know, these are all coaches that won a championship, and you were 50% on them on, like, whether you want them to coach or not. Oh, good point. Good point. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 But let's go go back to those uh, candidates again, and let's talk about the reason why I'd say yes or no. I will say you did flat out say Larry Brown was too old. You don't want him back. <laughs> That's fine. I'm not Basically. blaming you for that one. Basically, um, Frank Frank Vogel, you said no on who won in the bubble with uh, LeBron James, obviously, and, and and who was the orchestrator of everything in that organization? <laughs> it wasn't Frank Vogel; <laughs> it was LeBron James. So why would I want LeBron that as a coach? Same credit? Are you giving him the I'm, same credit for the sweep right now? No, 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 no. I'm not giving LeBron any credit. I'm saying Frank Vogel was not the guy running things. It was LeBron running every yeah. damn thing. So my point is, do I want him to come here? Like, no, a superstar can tell him what to do and make him do like a puppet. No, you don't want that guy. You want somebody who got a voice and, and got an authoritative voice. So no, I don't want that dude. And we got Rick Carlisle. Ah, that who, one I might be a little honestly, caught up Honestly, one of the, I, I, I like one Rick of the Carlisle, greatest though. championships. Yeah, I like Rick Carlisle. He's, 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 he did it with less than most of all these guys did. With let so I, yeah, I, I I guess I would change my mind with Rick. I I, I would say if he had to, if he if he, if he was available, he had to be out. Then yeah, I, I, I wouldn't mind have Rick Carlisle. I was, I mean, yeah, he's a good coach. I really like. I mean, we talking about X and O's and things like that. I think he's a good coach. Yeah, so I'll change my mind on Rick Carlisle. But other than that, everything else is pretty much all another baseball and the foot and the football and all that <laughs> stuff you came up with. <laughs> Yeah, I knew George Seifert was going to ruin it, but I was like, there's no way he knows who Bob Bradley is. I'm going to go and mess with him on this one. Now that you said the name, now that you said the name, it does ring a bell, Bob Bradley. It's baseball, but I, I wasn't thinking like that because I'm like, who the hell is Bob? <laughs> you got I me on that one. And I was like, I was like, oh, I got to keep a straight face on this one to move on. Yeah, you got me on that one. That was funny. You got me. But yeah, that's just tells y'all how much I, I follow baseball. But uh, but yeah, that's a good. That's a good. That's a good point you made, though. I mean, fifty percent of the same guy that won one championship. Yeah, I mean, I get it. I get where you're going with that. But at the same time, you still got to put respect on every last one of those guys' name that you just mentioned. Even if I'm saying no, I don't want them. You still got to put respect on their name that they deserve to be called championship coach, and they deserve an opportunity to at least get. They deserve what they put on a resume. They can they can get an interview for a job. I mean, period. That's like if you the board operating that you did for you know for certain radio stations, and we know how good you are at doing it. And then somebody recommends Mitch to come to it at the spot. And somebody said, "Nah, that dude suck." I mean, don't you think you deserve a spot because you know how to do it? You can at least get an interview. Let them see what you can do. No, I've been denied enough interviews in my life to know that I don't deserve an interview, and I'm not going to get an interview. And you know all I got is about. KSR. You know what, I'm, you know what I'm talking about, man. I'm talking about as far as what your experience is in any job, not just radio, any job. Your experience, you're going to be like, hey, I deserve to at least get a day and look at an interview or something. It's just the respect on his name to that degree. That's all I'm saying with Doc. That's all I'm saying. So 
I'm gonna leave it with that. And y'all, y'all can read the rest of that on the on the Casual Sports Radio Network, uh because there's an article up about that. And I'm giving Doc his uh credit for being a championship coach. That's all I'm doing. I ain't saying I want Doc to be the coach of the sun, so don't nobody start putting that with that. But I'm saying, and it just happens to happen. It's a Matt Ishbia move. Then hey, you can't you can't complain about it. Be like hey, he that that dude wanted that dude knows what it looks like. So I don't know. There's there's a two different moves. It, it, I want to see Matt the Matt Ishbia move in this coaching thing. I, I mean, I know I know the James Jones move. I already know that move. I know we know that move is going to be Kevin Young. We know that, and I'm pretty sure if they're in a room together right now. James Jones is probably hollering, Kevin Young, Kevin Young, Kevin Young. And he's standing up on the table trying to get Kevin Young's name over. And it's in that chair like, I don't know, man. That ain't the, that ain't the, that ain't the, the splashiest name out there. You know, he's in that chair probably thinking a totally different, totally different thing. So I want to see what the Ishbia move is going to be looking like. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I, oops. The only thing I disagree with is you say, nope. about what's going on. Oh, I can complain. No huh? one's better at complaining than me, and you know that. Say that again? You said uh, you want to see if Matt Ishbia makes the hire, then okay. no one can really complain about it. And I said that you know better than anyone. I'm better at complaining about it, and that's where I disagree <laughs> with you. Because <laughs> if he hires Doc Rivers, I'm still going to go on air next, the next day and complain about it. Like... No one's better at it than the person you hired to complain true. about. True, <laughs> true, true. That, but d- don't get me wrong. I'm not sitting there saying that Doc doesn't have flaws. He's got plenty of those. But I mean, like I said, so, sometimes, I'm, like I said, the article. Sometimes the stars just align perfectly, and some pieces go so good together. It's like, damn. And you just never know if that's the piece. I mean, I, I think Nick Nurse is that piece, to be honest. But, I mean, if, if they hired Doc. Or... Now, here's another thing. Here's another thing. We still got f- four other jobs out there that can talk. You talk about hiring Nick Nurse. He's going to be having offers on the table that probably won't be something that the Suns can offer. So, but then again, we also talk about a dude like Matt Ispia that has – the dollar bills now, maybe, and looking to go over that luxury tax, and he's gonna probably do whatever he wants, probably. I don't think coaches go over luxury tax, so oh, the coach is wrong, right, 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 out. right. So, so that that he can go there, he can do whatever he want with the coach, then. So yeah, so can, it's, I I think this team's talented enough, where especially if he makes a couple bench moves, I think he'll be the most wanted team. Right. So at that point, yeah. if you're willing to pay the most and be the most wanted team, you can have any coach you want at the end of the day. Exactly. 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 All right. That's enough of that. We, we, we we'll see. I'm pretty sure in the next week or so, probably I think probably in the next week or so, you'll see them hiring a coach. Um, uh, but I can guarantee you this much. You, after the hire, you will know who was in charge of hiring who, which guy. I guarantee you'll see that. You'll see that instantly, instantly. But give me your your prediction for game for game the next game of the Heat and Celtics game before we get out of here. This is a rough one because I'm so scared of Boston Celtics winning four in a row after our awful conversation that we had earlier today. Um, but the Celtics are bad at home. I got the Heat winning this one. Oh, yeah. I, I think I got the Heat winning, too, just, just because they're going to be more focused from Eric Spolster down to Jimmy Butler to the rest of the guys. So, Did you see the Jimmy just, Butler I, smile? No, I didn't. Oh, there was 34 seconds left, and he did the exact same smile of when the Knicks beat the Heat with Jimmy Butler on the bench the entire time. He did the exact uh, same smile, and nothing scared me more than Jimmy Butler smiling. Right, especially Grant Williams need to be checking that out too, because this is what he this this is what Jimmy was saying to him after that whole thing went down. Jimmy played pretty good. Jimmy's been watching you. Jimmy's ready. Jimmy got some new moves. Check Jimmy out. Jimmy's gonna get you. Jimmy holds grudges. Jimmy doesn't like you. Hands off, Jimmy. Don't touch Jimmy. <laughs> I 
had one of two clips like in my that. head, and it was that one. Oh yeah, that's that's a classic right there, man. That's a classic. Uh, that's funny. Don't touch Jimmy. Oh uh, yeah, that's what's gonna be happening on that night. So yeah, we got to get out of here, man. That's another another show for you in the Casual House, Earl Burnett, aka Casual E, right here on the KSRN Network. Mitchell Hughes is how we do it every night when we get a chance when we're not covering sports all over the valley. But uh, until next time, y'all stay cool out there. Because it's freaking hot out here. Peace out. All right, man, we clear.